a lot of great diverse ideas today, and I hope you'll take a moment with me, clear your mind, and I hope the topic I'll present today will help you take some actions to how you can take the inspiration into action. What is your name? Where are you from? What do you do for a living? These are probably the three loaded questions you always get when meeting someone for the very first time. It's not just about how you look, it's not about how you sound like, but it's actually about what information you can provide. So we live in a generation of uncertainties. There's a lot of unknowns, changes, and we have to adapt to those changes. But how often do we judge people by the cover? Do we judge them by their names, their accent, where they're from, what they do for a living? It's no wonder, because depending on what you do, chances are you probably spend 20 to 30% of your life at work. That tallies up to about 70,720 hours, or to give or take 15 years of our life. It's no wonder why our identity is so closely associated with what we do for a living and where we are. No matter where you're sitting right now, how many of you would consider yourself to be an entrepreneur? Chances are there are some of us among the room who wouldn't give ourselves the permission to call ourselves an entrepreneur. But surely entrepreneurship is a lot more than just about owning or running your own business. Wouldn't you agree that entrepreneurship is about an attitude? It's about your zest for life. It's about your curiosity, asking the questions, challenging the status quo, being flexible, building relationships. Surely that's what entrepreneurship is about. So why has that changed over time? Having worked with entrepreneurs for the past decade, one of the things I have observed is that there are three key questions or three key traits they share, no matter where they are from and what industry they're in. Firstly, where am I? What is my context? Second, what knowledge do I need? What are the gaps? What do I need to know and need to learn to really grow and develop myself as a person, professionally or personally? Third but not last, my favorite piece, who are in my community? What relationships do I have? And who are some of the people in my life that I can carry with me to grow and to develop as a person? I'm what you would call a third culture kid. I was born in Taiwan, my home culture. And at the age of 10, my family moved to Singapore, my second culture. Having these two unique lenses through life helped me to blend it and create a third culture of my own. I distinctly remember the first day in school. You can get the feeling, butterflies in your tummy, you're really nervous and there's kids around you. Everyone's excited, they're pumped. The only difference this time is that I didn't understand a single word. I moved when I was 10, I did not speak a word of English, and for that reason and that reason alone, I was demoted to grade one a 10-year-old among a group of five and six-year-olds. <laughs> Did I let the context define me? No, I could either sob and be really, really upset about the fact that I'm probably the oldest among a group of chicklings, or to redefine my context, and for once in my life, and once only, I was the tallest girl in class. <laughs> <laughs> And that was fantastic. It's really all about the context you look into. With that in mind, I had the extra motivation to get out of there as soon as I can. And with that, I was able to speed up my English. Speaking with, I called my mother yesterday. She said, remember the times when your teachers would call home and say, Lisa's always talking to the bus drivers. I don't know why she's not mingling with the kids in her class. My mom kind of just said, well, she is 10 years old in grade one, you know? She needs people at her own level. <laughs> 
How often, though, do we let our context define where we are? How often do we let that limit us? I'm an accountant. I'm an engineer. I'm a programmer. I'm a mother. I'm a sister. Why do we let these contexts or boxes define who we are versus what we can be? To complicate things a little further, I think the travel bug bit me quite early. So I moved as far away from family as I can when I was 18, and I moved to the state to study at University of Michigan. The funny thing about that was that I graduated in 2009, which is into the worst of the financial crisis in the United States. Got to up the challenge, otherwise life is not fun. And with that in mind, I created to fall back on my strength, which has always been about people and marketing and sales, or the other path of going into the crumbling Wall Street and pursuing a gigantic financial beast. I decided that I wanted to understand. I wanted to understand the context of what is this industry or this gigantic beast that there's no transparency or information into, but it so intricately affects our life. Why is it that this beast called the financial industry is able to affect our parents, our grandparents, wiping out pension funds, wiping out life savings, taking a city down, taking a country down, 40% of unemployment. These are things that unless we're willing to obtain knowledge that we lack, knowledge that we identify as gaps in our lives, Without that to set the context and to understand that knowledge, we won't be able to grow. We won't be able to challenge ourselves personally and professionally and seeing where we can move towards in the future. There's 220 million people right now in the world who are living in a country that's not their home. Chances are some of you in the audience are probably in that group. This makes us this global nomad. We are the fifth largest population of the fifth largest nation in the world, and that's something to be really proud of. But with that, how has our context shifted? And how has our knowledge gap grown immensely? Now, a popular saying you hear in business or in life is that it's not about what you know, but who you know. Beside the obvious implication of grafts and corruptions and all the negative things about that, it highlights a real fact. It's about the relationship we're building. And at the end of the day, we enjoy working with people we like, people like us or people who stimulate us intellectually. And yet in an age of technology, we are more and more disconnected over time, where you rather tweet your friends, Facebook poke them, or perhaps sending them a nice text for their happy birthdays. These are moments when human relationships are even more important than before because our context has changed, our global boundaries have changed, our knowledge base has changed. We're connected to five, six, seven hundred people any given year. And that's not really normal if you think about the humble villages or towns that we're coming from. Because at the end of the day, no matter where you're from, what language you speak, what the color of your skin is, race, gender, Food is a common language we all speak. Food is emotive. Food is something that triggers memories you might not remember you had. Memories of friends, of families, of people you care about. And how has that changed over time? And how has that affect our personal being and our identity beyond just the obvious? What's your name? Where are you from? And what do you do for a living? So if you combine the three elements today, then surely, wouldn't you agree, entrepreneurship is a lot more than just what you do for a living. It's about your attitude. It's about the curiosity and having the courage to ask questions, to ask unconventional questions, to challenge the status quo, to really put yourself out there and say, I'm dissatisfied. There's so much knowledge. We have the world in our back pocket, in our cell phones, and yet we're accepting ancient systems that's been around for 50, 60 centuries, when all we can do 
is look it up, whether it be Google, internet, or calling someone and speaking to the elders, those with the wisdom of their past contacts, of ancient knowledge systems, of relationships they have formed in the past that equips them really to tackle the future that we want to be in. So the next time you are at a cocktail party and you're having that awkward moment of silence when you meet someone for the first time, feeling the butterflies in your tummy, getting that ease or unease when you see what they're wearing, how they sound, what accents they have, what the skin color is. Remember the three elements that brought them to where they are today and those elements that can equip all of us to be the entrepreneurs in our life, in our personal life, in our professional life, and to have fun with asking questions, to have fun with having curiosity. So I hope wherever you are sitting in the room, the next time someone asks you what you do for a living, you can proudly say, I am a part of generation of entrepreneurs. Thank you very much. <laughs>